Um, they don't buy uh, antivirus software. If they buy it, they don't use it. They let it lapse. I, I, I'm not sure that we have an answer. You know, we've got the uh, um, Cybersecurity Awareness Week or month. day, month. month. Could be a year. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just it's it's not working. One one idea, and I want to and I want to just put this out here for comment. Um, the Australians have launched a program that uh, makes it so that providers are required to, I believe, or, or they have the, they're required to, right? It's, I think it's voluntary. Oh, voluntary. Yeah. Well, the idea is that the provi if, your, if your computer gets taken over, you know, it's become part of a bot, right? Um, when you turn on the computer, you'd get a notice that says, hi, Craig. Um, your computer's been taken over by bad guys. Um, you need to clean it up, and you need to do it before you are allowed onto the internet. And you know, maybe it include maybe it could include an explanation. And the reason this is is because your computer is doing bad things to other computers, and it's making it so that other people or other entities can't communicate. You need to clean it up. And Greg, we're not going to let you onto the internet until you do. Um, and, and the issue is, what would users do when they got that notice? Is it a good thing? Um, how would folks react to that? And really, it's, it's really, it's, it's tough medicine. You know, it really is tough medicine. Um, in our office at CDT, a civil liberties organization, I think it's fair to say that we're still talking through this because the problem is so great and yet the solution sounds like, oh my gosh, you mean I couldn't use the computer until I did this? It's not, and the other problem is the company that sends the notice, they have, I mean, ideally they would send the notice with something that says, click here and everything will be fine, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, can you trust the notice, right? <laughs> can you click here? Uh, and it's really, it ends up being not that simple uh, it turns out that it might actually be costly to get this um, problem solved. So I just want to put that out there as, I guess, uh, uh, a kind of user education, uh, but a real challenge. Let me let Sherry respond, and then um, maybe people in the audience have a feeling about this one way or the other. One second. Go ahead, Sherry. So I, I, think, there, I, think, um, I think there needs to be a really a two-pronged approach here. Um, we've seen over time that education awareness campaigns, they're valuable, but people are still clicking on those links, and they're still downloading bad stuff to their computers, and they're still infecting our networks. So um, we still need that education, huge, definitely need that. Folks need to be aware, just like uh, Don mentioned, when you walk down the street and protect your pocketbook in a big city, you need to do the same thing when you're online. Um, but we also need to move towards more automated, automated mechanisms to protect our systems. So, uh, you know, Semantic's doing a lot in this space. Microsoft's doing a lot in this space. We, we launched, um, or we provide through automatic updates and Windows updates uh, every month. Uh, you know, we push protections to 600 million users worldwide uh, every month. Uh, at that same time, we have what's called the Microsoft um, uh, malicious uh, removal uh, tool, which uh, malicious software removal tool that that will clean computers. Um, that that as those automatic updates are being pushed, if they detect malware, they're automatically being cleaned at the same time. But do we need to move to a model where it's really at the ISP uh, provider, where the cleaning and the quarantining is occurring there as well? So we have this almost layered defense approach where we have the education, we have automated cleaning and, and, and scanning, and then we also have the ISPs that are helping to clean and, uh, and secure the user systems at the same time. I think uh, there's a lot of policy implications associated with it, but it's something that I think we do need to start talking about. Yeah. Could, could I add just one uh, follow-up comment to that? Um, we've talked about, about protecting your own wallet, and sometimes I think there's a bit of a, a messaging uh, correction that we need to make, is that people have this false sense of their own independence and that their own lack of security on their 
computer only affects them. Mm -hmm. So my computer is affected with a virus. I think the more, you know, I mow my lawn partly because I would be embarrassed by my neighbors, you know? And I think, uh, you know, that's not a serious thing, but we have had successes in other areas where we have shared resources, uh, you know, and people through shame or, or laws uh, learn to correct the behavior because their individual behavior affects everybody else who's sharing the same system. So I think the more that we work towards education of users that they're part of a network and not just an independent system and that their, their lack of security affects their neighbors because they're going to be part of a botnet, they're going to be used to attack, uh, you know, somebody else by their own negligence in not having good security, that they will care more about it, uh, will have the right laws in place and hopefully, uh, you know, that sort of community uh, shame, if you will, or pressure will uh, play a role in getting them to update their security and have good security standards. So I think part of it is a messaging issue. If you don't care about yourself, at least care about you know, your impact on the community that you're a part of in the information world.